Escape from Tarkov is an extremely high stakes first person shooter, but instead of having a KD, if you don't survive the map that you're on, you lose everything you have on you. Fortunately, you have a stash where you can hide all your loot, which is also inside your small little headquarters. There's a huge variety of things you can do here, but the main point of the game is to go onto a map, complete quests, extract safely without dying. The game is extremely realistic. I've got nearly 200 hours in this game and I would consider myself relatively unexperienced compared to the hardcore crowd this game has attracted. Nevertheless, I strive on to make great plays the only way I know how. The Russian Mosin Nagant. Something you may not know about me is I am in fact a half Russian myself which gives me a 50% stat buff when using this bolt action rifle. Ha, <laughs> see, thought I was just gonna call it a gun. It's a bolt action rifle. And all jokes aside, I love bolt action rifles. Whenever I play any game, I want to be the sniper. I'm the shot that you don't even hear coming. And yeah, a lot of people hate this playstyle. And to them I say, in the words of Shakespeare, of course, I don't give a fuck. Today, I decide to do a quest on Shoreline. I have to kill scavs, which are basically like players, but they're AI. In a lot of games, it may be called newbie to die to an AI. Or, you know, only bad players die. In Escape from Tarkov, even the best of us get killed. Not often, but like, quite a lot, actually. <laughs> you'll be walking along, and the last thing you'll hear is, What on? What on, blad? Or my personal favourite, Cheeky Bricky. And if you do survive, they manage to pop your stomach, which is the one item of your body that when shot, you start to die from dehydration and hunger. So yeah, I've opted. <laughs> so yeah, I've opted to go on a shoreline run. I've been really lucky with silencers this wipe, so I do have two Mosin silencers, the Bremets. And like I said, the safest way for me to do this quest was to just stay far away. I've got the silencer, so I'm not going to get hassled by too many players, but fate has a funny way of working things out. As I've just said, I had absolutely no intention of fighting other players whatsoever, but the area that I spawned in is a hotbed, and I know for a fact that there could be at least three or four other players and or groups within about four or 500 meters of me. Now, all I want to do is loot this building, but if I get trapped in there, all I've got is a Mosin, and a sniper isn't good in close quarters. I decided to have a good look around. I spent a good 45 seconds scoping the entire ridgeline, making sure no one has spawned by the road and that's when i went to check around the radar tower and look at what we got here Although I didn't get a great look at him, he didn't look like he had a lot of gear on. I decided to reposition on top of this arch rock. I'm hoping he's going to plant something on the radar dish and run straight down the hill and I'm going to get a really easy shot at him as he's crossing this field. And that's when I heard it. I honestly wasn't sure if there was a bush or a tree next to him, so I decided to shoot that as well. You can kind of tell if someone's gone prone or if someone's dropped. I'm confident if there's more players there, they didn't hear where my shot came from. Now call it sixth sense or whatever you want, but just as I checked my exposed side on my right, I put another one down. Now that guy definitely has nothing, so I'm focusing on the fight here. Although I only heard two different kinds of guns being fired, you have to be very, very, very careful approaching a fight. Some people will just camp for 10 to 15 minutes without moving a muscle and just wait to see if you come along. Now, although I snipe, this is not my playstyle. I move around a lot, but I play carefully. I'm not happy about it, but I have to push in. The fog's gonna give me a little bit of help and they don't know where I am at all, so they don't know where they're looking. I confirm what I think to be two dead bodies, but I can't see anyone else. I start hearing shots behind me and I know it's people at the resort. And if there's four gears in there doing quick runs for lots of loot and gear, they're going to be heading this way in the next four or five minutes. Still don't know if this is all of them for sure, but I figure if I'm this close now, I gotta get some armor on and a close range gun. Fortunately, this guy has both of those things. Well 
Don't take risks when you pick up guns, guys. Make sure the gun's fully functional. You don't want to be caught with your trousers down in single fire with a half a mag. I personally would rather clear the area than just sit and camp. So that's what I do. I know for sure that there's three dead bodies, so I'd rather just loot three full sets of gear and get out than fight anyone else. And the worst thing in the world is being shot while looting. So with the area clear, I'll start looking for the guy that I killed in the very beginning. I feel pretty comfortable looting because like I said, I've checked the area, but this guy didn't even have a bag, so I couldn't take any of the guns that I wanted. Buddy number two has no guns but a bag and an even bigger tack rig. I grabbed everything else that was important off the first guy, then I decided to do a proper loop around the entire telephone pole or satellite, whatever you call it, to ensure that there's no other players and loot the final body. I literally rinse this guy for every single thing he has. I take the ADAR over the AKM. They were modded just about as well as each other, but I've been using the ADAR a lot this wipe, and I'm kind of starting to prefer the accuracy rather than the damage from the AK. Anyway, checking that I'm all fully loaded, I decide, you know what, I may as well check that guy that was running past, just in case he had a nice expensive pistol or something. Ordinarily, I would just head out here with everything I've got, but I've been in the area for so long, I can't see anyone, I'm pretty sure it's secure. And there's no point leaving money around. <laughs> I get up to the body, I tap F, and shit, he's been looted. I couldn't understand where this guy was. I remember thinking, if he's not at the top here, I'll be able to see him from the top here. And then I got to the top, and I couldn't see him, which made me even more concerned. One thing I love about Tarkov is the real sense of immersion you get. And when you feel like you're being watched, it's terrifying, but not too busy to complete the bloody quest that I came in here to do anyway. The extraction I need to get to is over here, but if this one's shut, I need to go to the other side of the map. I like to follow the road because there's a lovely big hill right next to it, and in my opinion, it's quite safe once you get past the gas station. I knew he was reloading, so I went for the run. And I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty panicked here. My health was really low, I was on around 160. <laughs> Luckily, this guy pushed me very badly. He revealed his entire body to me, and even though I was downhill from him, I had a massive advantage there. I'm nervous about another player, but I'm almost certain there isn't, because I didn't hear one and only one guy shot at me. I get one of my just-in-case IFAX and decide that I'm going to grab this guy's stuff and move, because there were shots at the gas station just moments ago. <laughs> I don't want them coming over here. This guy didn't have a lot of great stuff. I did find a PSU in his bag, which I wanted to take, but I just didn't have enough room for it. His armor was all knackered, but his tack rig was nice and big, so I nicked that. I was pretty careful going forward as I had heard a lot of shots, but everything seemed completely clear. I got to Peerbo, and that's when I found what seemed to be a level zero dog tag. So this player must have been level zero. I switched out my Makarov for his Beretta. I didn't want to faff about. I didn't want to die to whatever this guy died to. I was getting out. With extraction in sight, only one thing could get in my way. The fact that someone had already used the peerboat extraction and I'd have to go all the way to tunnels. I checked this guy's bag and way back past and all I found was a light bulb, which led me to assume that whoever killed him took everything that was good. I grabbed my 10th and final face mask that I needed for the quest, ran for my life for a good two minutes, And after killing a few scavs, I was home free. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't. I made a smooth 200 selling everything to Jaeger because I needed to level up his trader level. And he pays the same as Prapper for guns, but you'll likely make a bit more on mechanic. That's beside the point though. I had to go back in and get my bloody scav kills.
And with that quest done, I can smoothly sail up to the top of the customs exit and get the hell out of this map. <laughs> I didn't make a huge amount of money on the second run, about 150k. I got 35k for that massive tactical rig that I'd never even seen before and didn't know existed. It looks a little bit useless to me because it's got a lot of single slots on it. But hey, loot room is loot room. If you're still here, I'm glad you enjoyed the video. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons. You guys are amazing. Let me know down below if you want to see more Escape from Tarkov. And of course, don't worry, we're not going to forget about the Rust uploads. See you in the next one, and as always, have fun guys.